was diagnosed with ALS. Early on, within days of the diagnosis, he said, I'm not going to go to the end of this. I went into the uh, study one day and he said he was, I'm, I'm just Googling suicide. His name was Bill Kennett, a senior public servant in Ottawa, a man accustomed to making weighty decisions. But his last was shrouded in secrecy. And I remember on uh, the 1st of October, he came into breakfast and said, it's time to set a date, October the 20th, Monday, 2 o'clock. It's been 20 years since another Canadian, also dying of ALS, forced the right to die debate onto the national stage. When she asked a simple yet profound question. Whose body is this? Who owns my life? 20 years since the Supreme Court of Canada told Sue Rodriguez it was illegal for a doctor to end her life. How do we rationalize carving out the terminally ill from the disabled. She too died an early death, shrouded in secrecy. Now, one of the judges who ruled against Sue Rodriguez so long ago says the federal government needs to act. If your question was, would you like to see Parliament decide something on this? My answer is yes. Poll after poll shows the majority of Canadians support the decriminalization of assisted suicide. Yet we're stuck in limbo in this country, caught between courts reluctant to take the lead and politicians unwilling to risk backlash come election day. But whether or not politicians choose to take part, that discussion is happening. And sometimes the voices come from unexpected places. Two decades ago, he was the new guy on the bench, the Supreme Court of Canada, when one of the biggest cases of his career would come along. Jack Major recalls the Rodriguez case as haunting. I don't think any of the nine judges had anything but sympathy for this woman. I can't recall anybody being absolutely firm. And the judgment took quite a while to come out because I think, uh, Judges had a difficult time, but I would suspect some of my former colleagues may have thought one way one day and a different way the next day till they finally, you finally come to a conclusion. And you can't sit on the fence forever. In the end, it was a split decision, five to four against Rodriguez. Justice Major sided with the majority. Still, he's emphatic the court sent a message to Parliament, modernize the law on assisted suicide. If your question was, would you like to see Parliament decide something on this? My answer is yes. They should decide something. That's what they're there for. So they know it's a, an issue of public concern debated in the House, have a vote. I mean, what's Parliament for? Bill Kennett always had a healthy respect for the law. He'd played it by the book his whole career, first as a Deputy Minister of Finance, later as Inspector General of Banks, under several Prime Ministers. His retirement unfolded as planned too, until at age 74, he was diagnosed with ALS. Unwilling to die slowly and painfully, he resolved to end his own life. The nagging question, how could he protect his family from the law? I remember, there, so there were several conversations with the lawyer and several meetings, and I remember at one meeting, I asked the lawyer if I could hold Bill's hand, and he said yes, I, that was okay. During 50 years of marriage, Bill and Valerie shared everything, but not this. Bill hid the details of his death from his wife and adult children so they wouldn't be implicated. 
I think it was a very um, hard and lonely thing for him to do, to make these decisions. The awful thought was an attempt and then left with a dreadfully damaged human being. And where do we go from there if the mind is damaged and the body is damaged and there's still life? What happens then? That was, I didn't spend much time there. I didn't want to. Over the next year, Bill's body declined. Yet for Valerie, it was like a second honeymoon. The trivial no longer mattered, a state she calls the radiance of the ordinary, right up to the last day. Well, the last day was, I look back and uh, nothing too unusual about it, which is perhaps unusual in itself. Uh, we didn't talk about, they started in, in the normal way. And then I believe I uh, went out to plant some daffodil bulbs and he read in the sunroom as he usually did with the cat on his lap. We didn't, uh, we didn't talk about what was gonna happen later in the day. We didn't need to. In the early afternoon that autumn day, Bill and Valerie sat down to watch a video of their lives together along with their children and two members of Dying With Dignity. When it ended, Bill very calmly said, I think it's time, and got up, and uh, a few minutes later, he was dead. It was peaceful, it was quick, it was as he wished, on his timing, in his own home, with his family, at his side, and I held his hand and let him go. Bill Cannett ended his life just one year after diagnosis, worried if he waited longer, he'd lose the ability to do it himself. The law simply wasn't on his side. After the Rodriguez decision, the issue went nowhere in this country for years, but not in the rest of the world. Eight jurisdictions did legalize euthanasia or assisted suicide, four in Europe, four in the US. Then, this year, the Quebec government announced a bold plan to pass a euthanasia bill, breathing new life into the Right to Die movement in Canada. La protection de la jeunesse présente le projet de loi numéro 52, loi concernant les soins de fin de vie. When Health Minister Véronique Yvonne tabled her end-of-life bill, she had the support of all three political parties, a first in this country. Merci, Monsieur le Président. The bill would allow medical aid in dying, not assisted suicide. In other words, doctors would administer the fatal dose. Uh, for us, uh, it was very important that the uh, medical aid in dying be uh, a kind of care. The, the, the purpose is not to end somebody's life. The purpose is to alleviate the suffering, and it is the only, the only way to do it because palliative care can't do the job in some uh, circumstances. That plays well at home. More than 80% of Quebecers are in favour, and the bill is expected to pass by year's end. Still, there are physicians such as Dr. Gerald Van Gerp who say euthanasia is simply wrong. And the lethal injection is a slippery slope. There's a lot of abuse. There's a whole lobby in Belgium now the, the euthanasia lobby that's pushing for ha to have this available for people with Alzheimer's disease. There's all kinds of badness happening. I, I don't think it's a good law. And that we should develop an enlightened policy for dealing with these issues. Joel Bakken, a constitutional law expert at the University of British Columbia, sees it as a creative but futile attempt to recast the debate as a health matter, not a criminal one. It's black and white that if there's a conflict between a provincial law and a federal law, the federal law will prevail. The question of what a conflict is, there's some elasticity there. But it's difficult for me to see the court finding no conflict if a law says it's okay to have assisted suicide when the federal law says it's not. A better answer to end-of-life suffering, say those at the West Island Palliative Care Residence in Kirkland, Quebec, would be more palliative care. The hospice has 23 beds in all, where patients such as Geraldine can end their days in comfort. 
I'm glad it happened that fast and I was ready and I want to come and I'm happy here. I'm happy that I came. <gasps> you know, it's nice. Compassion and care are what the dying need, says the center's director, Teresa Delar, not a lethal injection. What we've noticed, certainly at the palliative care residence, is that when people have their pain managed, their symptoms managed, um, when their psychological, uh, spiritual, social needs are met, um, they want to live their final days. Um, and they don't want to make it short. They want to have the natural process happen. Yet very few Canadians have access to this kind of palliative care, less than 30%. The Ontario Research Chair in Bioethics is Queen's University Professor Udo Schuckling. When it comes to voluntary euthanasia, there the situation is very different. There the situation he says the there's a pressing need for choice. Because what is true, if you improve palliative care, you almost certainly would have a smaller number of requests for assisted dying. That is obvious. Will you be able to do away with all such requests just because you improve palliative care any palliative care specialist who will tell you you can do away with all of these requests is lying to your face. What's certain, Quebec's euthanasia bill faces years of legal wrangling, and it may be a moot question if a different case makes it to the Supreme Court first. Gloria Taylor suffered from ALS and last year won a landmark victory in BC that held she had a constitutional right to obtain assistance to end her life. I do. Oh my All God. Right. Oh my All God. Right. Taylor died of an infection without knowing an appeal court overturned that ruling, so yet another case is likely heading to the Supreme Court. Joe, and you guys, thank you so Can much. Grace and I are just sitting here crying. This time, though, Canada's highest court could come to a different conclusion. I think what has changed over the last 20 years is uh, we've actually got some jurisdictions in the United States and in Europe that have developed uh, fairly detailed, well thought out, evidence-based approaches to ensuring uh, that allowing a right to assisted suicide does not lead to abuse, does not lead to vulnerable people being taken advantage of or exploited. That ensures that the decision is a decision that's medically supported, that's rational, that's deliberate. So we actually have experience, uh, more experience than we did in 1993. Former Justice Jack Major still maintains it's up to Parliament to make that change, and he knows what the first step could be. They just have to repeatedly repeal the criminal code section. They don't have to do anything else. Just take it out. They don't have to set out when you can uh, end your life. Just remove the prohibition against assisted suicide. It'd be no longer a crime. So they'd be bound, I think, to put some safeguards around and see how they worked, and from time to time might have to change them. But there's countries and states that have implemented this. So they can learn from them as to whether it works, whether there's abuse. Opposition, however, is fervent. A minority for sure. Only 17% of Canadians think assisted suicide should be a crime, according to a recent poll. But it's not hard to understand why doing nothing makes political sense. Do you, as a politician running for re-election, do you want to be called a murderer? Do you want uh, um, um, comparisons be drawn to the Holocaust and so on and so forth? So I do understand why politicians would rather stay clear of this. But that still begs the question of whether Canadians have a constitutional right. And that's for the, for the Supreme Court of Canada to decide, not for politicians. When we return... When they arrived, I, um, I took one of the young officers to where Bill was. And his first question was, how did you find him? And I said, I was here. With assisted suicide still a crime in Canada, 
Police in Perth had no choice but to investigate Bill Kennett's death as a homicide. When they arrived, I, um, I took one of the young officers to where Bill was. And his first question was, how did you find him? And I said, I was here. And then he said, and you didn't stop him? And I said, no. I think, uh, I think you're young, and I think, I said, do you know anything about ALS? I think you have to, I think you have to learn what this was all about. Valerie and the others who'd been present were taken to separate rooms and interrogated. The investigation lasted nearly four hours. No charges were laid. I remember saying to the sergeant, I understand that you've done due diligence and you've followed your mandate, but there has to be a better way. There has to be in a, a better way that this kind of death can be handled. It's not a random, unexpected, violent, traumatic experience. It was the ending of a good life in a peaceful way. Why it is illegal for someone to assist me to do something that is legal is a paradox I will never understand. But more to the point, it is a paradox which forces me to suffer greatly, both mentally and physically. So many years since her voice galvanized popular opinion. I'm Dr. Donald Lowe. Now, once again, a plea from the dying has struck a chord. Donald Lowe, a doctor best known for saving lives during the SARS crisis, asking for the right to end his. Uh, there's a lot of opposition to it. A lot of clinicians op have opposition to dying with dignity. I wish they could live in my body for 24 hours, and I think they would change that, change that opinion. I'm just frustrated not being able to have control of my own life not being able to make the decision for myself when enough is enough. You know, we've come far enough. It's time to, to bring it to an end. Dr. Lowe, only 68 when he died, himself a member of the baby boom generation. Defined by its activism during the 1960s, by its power to bring about change, a generation now ready, says Udo Schucklink, to fight for one last right. The one common feature of all the, their political activism really is extending individual liberties as far as self-regarding actions are concerned. That's the crucial issue, control over my body. Well, if you are fighting for control over your body, you certainly want to ensure that you control what's happening to you towards the end of your life. This is why these people are usually powerful, because right now, that's where they're at. It's the last, and I say this not in, 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 in a, in a, in a, in a cynical way. This is the last big battle they have ahead of them because this is the next generation basically that is facing death. So it is not a big surprise that the push is very powerful. Coming next on Last Right. Harriet Scott lived her whole life in the driver's seat in control and she wanted to end it that way too. So I'm in a lot of pain that they're unable to relieve. And then I'm going to think about doing something about that myself. Her deathbed plea for assisted suicide. People can make free choice, have free will. The life and death of Harriet Scott, next Monday on The National.